Dear distinguished guests, it's a great honor to participate in this session on Arctic trade and investment. And for your information, this is my first time in Greenland, and I have to tell you, this is definitely not my last time here because the country is beautiful and the people are warm. And to my excuse, uh, coming from Iceland, usually when we're traveling, we kind of want to go south because of uh, you know, going into a little bit warmer climate. But uh, obviously, as our next door neighbor, we want to cultivate and work further with the authorities here in Greenland. So in my address, uh, I want to talk about the climate history, the climate change in our times, and uh, international Arctic uh, architecture, or a clearinghouse. And like my colleague, uh, a typical politician, I'm going to go back into history. Uh, for nearly 500 years ago, between 984 and sometimes in the uh, and somewhere in the 14th century, Vikings, Icelanders, lived in Greenland and built churches, wrote in Latin and Icelandic, herded farm animals, followed the European fashion, but then suddenly they didn't they disappeared. As they didn't know the land and they didn't work with the people of Greenland. The mystery of their disappearance is symbolized in the stone church in Kualse, Vikings, Vikings Greenland's most famous building. The Vikings disappeared, but the Inuit survived, proving that human survival in Greenland was not was possible. I want to go into Jared Diamond's book uh, on collapse, where this question is addressed. Why did Vikings ultimately fail to master Greenland's problems while the Inuits succeeded? There are basically six reasons provided to it. First is the Vikings' impact on the environment. Second, climate change. Third, trade deficit. Fourth, decline in friendly contact with Norway. F the fifth reason, the increase in hostility, uh, contact with the Inuits, and finally, the conservative, how conservative the Vikings were. I'm just gonna talk about the first three explanation and put them into a context with the challenges that we're facing today. So if we first look at the environment, uh, the Vikings are believed to have depleted the environmental resources on which they depended by cutting trees, over, uh, over grassing, and causing soil erosion. Hence, the depletion of environmental resources threatened the soci their society survival in poor years. And this, in my mind, is a stark reminder to us today that we carefully need to research the environment before we start using its resources because it can truly have a devastating effect on us today. Uh, number two, climate change. Calculation of climate from Greenland ice course show that it was a relatively mild when the Vikings settled. But then, uh, around uh, the 14th century, uh, the Little Ice Age arrived and lasted until the 18th century. That lowered hay production as well as clocking uh, ship lanes between Greenland and Norway with the sea ice. And finally, the uh, reason I want to mention is basically trade deficit. It was difficult to trade at the Little Ice Age because the ships were not traveling back and forth as fast as they used to. And then there was a lack of demand of some of the products that were produced in Greenland. For instance, the valorous uh, ivory and, uh, and also because of the Black Death, uh, like half of the population of Norway disappeared. So why am I talking about history? Because I think it's very relevant for us today. Uh, in the modern times, we need to uh, study history and also learn from the mistakes that were made. And I think if we look at what we can learn from, it is 
without a doubt that we need further cooperation in the Arctic uh, area. And one of the suggestions that we've been talking about, uh, the Icelandic authorities, uh, whether we should uh, work together with the authorities in Greenland on an international Arctic architecture or a clearinghouse that could facilitate trade and investment in the area. I think that could be uh, something that could increase uh, cooperation and with, uh, without a doubt, especially right now, because of the changing in geopolitical uh, challenges, we need to... Uh, work on this together. Uh, finally, my message to you is that we need to act shiftly because of uh, the climate change. And I want to thank uh, the chairman of the Arctic Circle uh, for making uh, all this discussion and cooperation taking place between different countries. Because what we need now is more international cooperation because of the challenges that we are facing. Thank you.